Pandanasa Monastery was uh, designed as a traditional Athenite monastery with strong Byzantine traditions. The intention was that it would bear witness to the Greek Orthodox Church in Australia. fortunate that uh, because we had to excavate into rock to achieve the required levels, the whole structure, not only of the cathedral of the church, but also of the kitchen dining and the monks quarters, the whole complex is down to rock. Hence, uh, no settlement as a result of that, no cracking. When this process began, there was no real concept of budget. We knew that the buildings needed to last many hundreds of years. We knew that to create structures that were as beautiful as those that are on Mount Athos, we needed to spend money. We knew that the remoteness of the site would only add to that cost. The lack of services, there's no water, there was no electricity, there's no sewerage. All of this had to be created before we even started to build. We are currently building approximately one third of the master plan. Uh, but ideally we would need to build half of the master plan to accommodate the requirements of the fathers at the moment. We had the good fortune that the bricklayer who eventually took on the job took it upon himself to cut perhaps 40 to 50 percent of the bricks on the church which resulted in the beautiful detailing that exists on the building today. We ended up with a building that perhaps is quite unique within the Orthodox tradition, but also as a, a building on its own. The buildings were designed for a purpose. They were designed for longevity, for endurance, for low maintenance. They were designed and they've been built to last 500 years. The gold crosses at the tops of the dome, each of the domes of the church building, are from Russia. Russia itself is an Orthodox country and it has a strong tradition. 
of handcrafted detailed work. get a better appreciation of the degree of complexity and intricacy of the structure by looking at the corbel above the columns, the arches, the vaults, the cross vaults, and why we opted to go to a concrete frame. Further, you can see the end product have almost perfect, the arches, the vaults, and all the detail has evolved. That's why I believe it was prudent that we went to false work, which unfortunately did cost us a lot more money. Besides the structural considerations, we also had to take into account the iconography that was to be applied to the walls and ceilings, hence why we opted for the concrete frame. As you can see, the whole internal structure is a monolithic concrete and on the outside of that we've got the cavity and that elegant brickwork. The choice of roof tile was quite limited because we have the vaulted roofs and the domed roofs on the church. The half barrel tile is the only tile that would actually allow us to clad these forms. My study trip to Greece um, gave me some inspiration with respect to the general aesthetic of the building, particularly the quadrangle building. The, Normally the, the monasteries in Greece uh, evolved over many hundreds of years and part of that evolutionary process was the way that the buildings were added to, another story was put on, balconies were built and then over time those balconies were then enclosed. So what we've tried to do here is to try and emulate some of that general evolution of construction and the way monasteries evolve over time and weren't built as a lump sum in one hit. And here we are in the front patio of the church and it has many examples of some of the detail we had discussed earlier. There's the corbelling of the brickwork, all the colours of the brick palette are utilised here on the front patio, stonework, even the door head shows um, we, we used a recycled iron bark which is approximately 150 years old. Um, it's important to note that the Bricklayer uh, won an award this year, the Master Builders Association Excellence in Brickwork Award um, and the evidence speaks for itself. At present the church may appear to be complete, however there are some stone detail panels that still require completion. The inside of the church requires floor, requires lime render to the walls to allow the fathers to begin their iconography. It also requires lighting. 